QA Metis. Software Testing Metrics QA metrics are used to estimate the progress and effectiveness of testing activities so a team can plan their working processes efficiently. In this video, I will tell you about the different types of metrics and how to use them. There are base metrics, also known as absolute. They encompass various measurements gathered during test case development and execution. On the screen, you can see a list of QA base metrics for tracking your project. The other group is known as calculated metrics or derivative metrics. This data allows you to estimate the effectiveness of the testing process and the quality of the product under test. To get calculated metrics, QA leads and team managers apply specific formulas to previously collected base metrics. There are two types of calculated metrics process and product ones. Let's take a closer look at each of them. Process metrics are used during test preparation and test execution. Here is a list of metrics that belong to this category. Test tracking metrics show the percentage of passed, failed, blocked tests, etc. Let's take a closer look at it. For example, we have 240 test cases in total, 181 of them passed, 28 failed, and 31 were blocked. To calculate the percentage of passed tests, you have to divide their quantity by the total number of executed tests. Then goes test case preparation productivity. It is a way to estimate the timing of test case preparation. In other words, you will get test cases per hour ratio, just like the one on your screen. Test design coverage is used to measure the percentage of requirements covered by test cases. Here's an example. Test execution productivity shows how many test cases that can be executed per hour. Test execution coverage helps to track the progress of testing activities by comparing a number of already executed and planned tests. Here is a formula you can use. Finally, test effectiveness allows you to estimate the value of a test set. Let's take a look at the formula. Product metrics are used on later stages of the testing cycle during the defect analysis. Here is the formula of the first metric on our list is error discovery rate. It shows the effectiveness of test cases in percentage. Error fix rate allows estimating the build quality in terms of defect fixing. In this case, the calculations will be a bit more complicated. Another widely used metric is defect density, the number of confirmed defects divided by the size of the software. The size of software can be measured in lines of code or number of requirements, just like in the example you can see on the screen. Defect leakage shows the efficiency of testing activities that took place before user acceptance testing. Here is the formula. QA metrics provide answers to some important questions. How much time will product testing take? How many fixed closed reopen bugs are there? How many of those bugs are critical? How many defects were reported by users? What areas do CA engineers should focus on? Can we finish testing in time? How efficient are the test cases? And more. To sum up, QA metrics help to make the right decisions and drive quality improvements. But for this, you should pick the right metrics to track and always analyze them in the context of the product. For more information on QA metrics, go to our blog. The link is in description. Thank you for watching the video and come back for more.